Do you want to know what makes an eyelid grow? Then everybody watch Dean Show. The Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. The greetings of peace. Peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. Today we have another exciting show. We're going to be talking about our youth. This is for everybody. Everyone can benefit because somebody is a youth or you got some kids, teens that are out there. And some of them are getting in some trouble. So when we come back, we're going to have our brother all the way from Minnesota, Imam Sheikh Hassan. And then we'll tell you his nickname that people call him when we come back here on The Dean Show. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be with you, my brother. Alhamdulillah. Thanks, brother Adi. Thank you for being with us. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for inviting me in this important occasion. Thanks. Yes. You also have a, a nickname. I, I, I heard that uh, yes. some of the youth and people, you yes. know. Uh, the, uh, sheikh Hassan Jami'i. That's what they call me. Jami'i. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you're the cool sheikh. Inshallah. <laughs> yeah. so. the, exactly. The, the, sometimes they say, like, they call me, like, uh, uh, Sheikh Shabab, uh-huh. which means, like, uh, the Sheikh of Youth. So yeah. that was, uh, I always uh, involved in all youth, uh-huh. youth activities or issues. Like all the time I'm with them. Yeah. Like you can say like 24-7 I'm yeah. with them. So. so you're with the youth, but you're also, you get serious now because that is serious business too, but you're also an attorney. You teach, you're a professor yeah. at the Islamic University. Talk yes. to us a little bit about yeah, yourself. Yeah, I, I, I teach, uh, uh, I'm adjunct professor of William Mitchell College of Law. Uh-huh. I teach Islamic law, Introduction to Islamic Law. Uh, basically, it is like a comparat- comparative type of subject. What I yeah. do is I teach uh, a law school students uh, principle of Islamic laws, and then I compare to uh, to the principles of American legal system. Mm-hmm. I also teach Islamic University of Minnesota, which is the only Islamic university in Minnesota. I teach uh, two subjects. One is uh, it's called like Madkhal uh, Tashri' uh, al-Islami in Arabic, which means uh, introduction to the Islamic law. And the other one is like Al-Fiqh uh, al-Islami, especially Fiqh al-Awwal, which means like Fiqh 1, that focus on ibadat, especially rules related to the Salah from A to Z. I teach that one. Uh, I work for Legal Aid Society of Minneapolis. Uh, I'm legal advocate. I do uh, 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 immigration work which means uh, uh, anything related to the immigration law, almost. Mm-hmm. I do help most of immigrants. Uh, majority of them are uh, Somalis or Muslims or Oromo or East Africans, but I do help like uh, Hispanic community, uh, Hmong community, uh, Arab and other communities uh, coming to our office for seeking free legal services. We are free legal service. And I do also presentations about their rights, know your rights, especially what's your rights when it comes to the homeland security. We, I do that. And, uh, and this is like a, a good connection to my office because, for example, we have a youth who have a problem and they end up to the deportation procedure. And then as an immigration unit office, we try to help them uh, to find way out from this uh, deportation procedure, which mm-hmm. sometimes is very difficult, especially for the Somalis. So you're very active. You're out there yes. not only helping the Muslim community, but you're helping anyone, Hispanic, yes, exactly. African American, a Caucasian, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Yes. You're out there, and that's what Muslims should be doing. They should exactly, be people yes, who are yeah. benefiting the community, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. It's, only, it's not only that. What I also do is I'm board member of uh, Red Cross yeah. of Minnesota. And uh, I've been board, board member since uh, 2007, 2008. Uh, I'm also a member of advisory committee to the both chiefs, chief of the police of Minneapolis and chief of the police of mm-hmm. St. Paul. Yeah. So there is here also a good connection to the police system so I can help those young people out uh, of trouble. Okay, and that's our topic today, the young youth, the shabab, would you say? Yes. 
Yeah. A lot of them today are out. As some of us who've been in Jahiliya, you get caught up and you mix, get mixed up in the cultural norms. And you got colors. Some killing each other over red and blue. Some killing each other over boyfriends and girlfriends. Yo, you talking to my girl. No, you talking to my guy. And exactly. next thing you know, the guns are being pulled. And now you got some even doing stick up. All sorts of things are going on. Exactly. Are the movies to blame? Are the parents to blame? Are we to blame? Let's talk about this, and you can give us some yeah, some real situations this, that yeah, you've this, encountered. Yeah, it is. Uh, I remember always uh, two two poems. It is both of them are Arabic. Let me translate them in English. One says like لو كان سهما واحدا لا تقيته ولا كثيرا وثالث ورابع, which means uh, when you are in defense and in the battle, if one arrow could face you, you can defend yourself. It's only one arrow. But the the poet says if it's more than one arrows coming from different directions, you will have difficult to defend yourself. And that's the situation of our young people today. Like many problems, fitna if you want to call that, and all types of the uh, social problems coming from every direction, uh, they cannot stand alone to uh, resolve those problems. They need help. Mm -hmm. And then another poem that I remember, uh, according to your question, which is very important, I love that poem. That poem says in English, like, you uh, threw me in a big ocean in the dark of the night and uh, a big wave, and you did not teach me how to swim. And at the same time, you tied my, my two hands and legs. Uh, how will I survive? That's the meaning of the poem. Mm -hmm. So this person will never survive. Yeah. So that means like uh, I'm talking this now about the Somalis, Oromos. Oromos are East African uh, immigrant communities who live also about 10,000 in, in, uh, in, in Minnesota. So when they come or they came to uh, Minnesota or to America, they, ha they are not well equipped to know about the system, about yeah. the culture. And uh, uh, they are blind. So... And they end up to find out like way out from where they are when, when they face all these difficulties and they create your own system or they might join to the system exist, the system that says like we can help you. Uh, and that's why when you ask like these young people, I talk to them, they are with me right now. So I and Sheikh Nalan, so assistant imam, we have six young people who are with us. We are eight of us right now. Yeah. So two of them were like uh, street boys and one of, one of them was uh, uh, from gang system. Yeah, that's like uh, the street boys like out and being in gangs and on the yeah, streets yes. running the... And, and then we divide them. Sometimes like street boys still attending the schoolies, but we have street boys the, uh, who are in the gang system but left the school, dropped the school and do all types of the bad things, harming, hurting people and uh, snitching and all this. So we divide and categorize them. But uh, one of them was even like gang leader. He yeah. organized. The head, head, head. Uh, yes, head of. Headman. Headman, well armed, yeah. uh, doing all that mm -hmm. like violence. How, how did you deal with him now? Oh, okay, this example, like the one that who's with me right now, he has been with me almost the last, uh, since 2007. He, he 2000. left us now. He left the gang system. And the way it was like there was a fight one time, and that fi fight caused him almost uh, uh, to uh, slaughter him, like from neck down to the... The opposite opposing gang opposing almost him, cut his... Cut his, almost yeah. his neck. This was a street gang fight a street now. gang fight. Yeah. And he ended up to the hospital, and he has been there, he has been in coma for 30 days. 30 days. He was in coma. He was in coma. So he's not anymore. And then what happened was, the doctor say, said after that, he might die. No, he had like a life support system and then family and doctor they signed that the family signed that he cannot be anymore in this system yeah let him die like mm -hmm. and then doctor gave like uh, signing papers that uh he might die after six hours six hours yes that's he was almost dead said. let's uh, hold it right there we're going to yeah. take a break and we'll be right back to hear this story back on the dean show Allah. There's only one People often say to me, why have you become a Muslim? No, I, I give a very frivolous answer. I say, I want to be on the side of the angels. Tupac is a guy. He's the number one rap artist in the world. He sold over 60 million records worldwide. 60 million? 60 million. 
He was a young guy who had basically everything that some of the youth would think that life is all about. He had everything you can imagine. The Dean Show. Back here on The Dean Show, we're talking about the brother. He was in a coma and they disconnected the life support? He was on yes, life support? Yes. Talk to us, what happened then? Okay, what happened was the doctor came and told the family that he will die after six hours. And then we uh, fortunately came from the mosque. So our young people, what we do is like as an imam leading those young people, we visit mosque, uh, hospitalists. By the way, we visit also non-Muslims. Yeah. We, we wish them well. Yeah. So, and, uh, and we went to hospital. We, uh, so one of the members of the hospital told us there is a young boy that is about to die. Would you please go and place and read some type of supplications? And then I said, like, oh, this is the right time. And uh, because he's young, I'm leading young people. I want them to reflect to this person. And mm -hmm. we had some type of his stories and background and the fight, the gang fight that he has been and all this. We came and we saw like a man. But whenever we came, what surprising was uh, the doctor told us there is a type of movement, his body. He feels, but he cannot move at all. Yeah. And then as an imam, I went and I put his hand on my hand. I said, we are going to read some Quran on you. And we ask Allah, God, to give you shifa. Now, Quran is the verbatim word of God Almighty Allah. Yes. Okay. And it's basically, and Muslims traditionally, whenever they are sick or whenever they're not feeling well, they use it as a medicine. So is this like we're doing rukia on him? Exactly. Okay. We did rukia, which means like uh, uh, reading specific verses or surah or chapters of the Quran on the body of the sick yeah. person. Okay. That's what we did. And then after that, when it's we... Uh, we were at the end, uh, I said this. I said, like, Abdul Qadr, I know uh, the doctor says this is your end and it is the last momentum of your journey, but we believe in Allah, which means whatever is destiny. So you might die today, you might not die today. But I ask this question, this is what, what happened. I said, like, your hand is on my hand. Will you promise if God give you life back, that you will join to Dawa Caravan. We have a youth Dawa Caravan, mm -hmm. uh, which was like a group of youth trying to help street boys and girls right now, not, not only boys anymore. Yeah. So out of the street, out of the violence, will you help us? Will you promise? It's now like, he's on his deathbed. This is yes, it. You yes. make a choice. You're going to yes. do good or you can continue yes. doing evil. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what he said? This is the first time even the nurse watching moved his head saying like, SubhanAllah. Yes. This was like a miracle. We did finish uh, all type of ruqya, which means like recitation on his body, recitation of the Holy Quran, and we left. And then, after a few days, we found that he's alive. And then, a couple of months, they brought him back to his home. Anyway, finally, he ended up coming back, uh, coming back to the real life, and he came to the mosque. Yeah. And we saw him walking, coming to the Islamic Center. Mm -hmm. and How long after that, was this? After it's after a couple of months. A couple, because, few months? Yes, a few months. Yeah. And then he said, yeah, do you remember me? I said, like, I remember you. He said, yeah. like, I'm here for the promise. Now he kept his word. He was true to his yes, word. Yes, yes. Allah uh, healed yeah. him. Yes. Took care and of the, him. And now yes. he came And then he said, like, I'm paying. I have to pay back to Allah. Yes. And then I said, like, okay, here is the young people I, I introduced to the young people, and then we start uh, helping him, like, rehabilitate. Uh, we put him, like, a process called a process of rehabilitation, young people who came out from this type of the life, which requires, like, a lot. And then after long discussion, we agreed, uh, because our center ha uh, has apartments, like, uh, uh, the, f the first floor is mosque, mm -hmm. and the second floor are apartments. So most of the time, if we think like a, we have a young person who's yeah. qualified to put him there, we move him there. And that is like type of isolation from the rest of the society. Yeah. So and then he has to follow rules because we don't want him to be connected back to the gang system. Yeah. And, and he was head of the gang. He was not a member of the gang. Yeah. And you know how many callers that who could receive all this, no cell phones, nothing. So some so, discipline here now. Discipline. So yeah. we call like a tarbiyah. 
Yeah. So, and then I put him... They define tarbiyah for some non tar Yeah, tarbiyah means like it's like Islamic discipli uh, disciplining system that helps the person uh, not only physical discipline, it is like mosaic or comprehensive type of the discipline. Yeah. It's spiritual, educational, physical. So physical exercise, we have a Sheikh Nalan who was teaching him martial artists. Martial arts to, also. Yes, huh? yeah. To balance his life. Yeah. And he's one of the students of the martial arts. Keep him artists. busy doing good. Exactly. And then educational, we have two types of the educational. Attending the programs that we have, we call like a, a halaka. Halaka means like Islamic circles. He is studying like how to pray and uh, how to read the Quran. That's yeah. the first time after 10 years involving with the gang system. Nothing to do with the Quran or, or with the good things. And then I, I registered him with the GED program. GED program is the program that qualify you to go to college after three or, or two years. Yeah. It depends on like how far so you, you fast. So you got a complete system. Yes, it is a complete system. T tell us, because we only uh, have a little bit of time. We, we want to hit a, certain f a few more important points. Tell us for those youth and parents who are trying to get some advice for their youth, the parents might have not been implementing the way of life that the Creator wants them to implement. Islam, total, complete submission to the will of the Creator, not their desires. Yeah. So the TV's been raising the kids. Yes, now one the, of the big teachers. The music, the hip-hop, and Tupac, <laughs> and 50 yeah. Cent, and mm -hmm. all these, and it's innocent. They leave the kids in front of the TV, yes. and now they wonder why things, and they're acting and exactly. imitating if, these yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. Give some advice now to, to those parents whose children are in gangs, the women also, they might be out there going to the nightclubs, and now you have their attention. Mm -hmm. The children, the youth are listening, and the parents. What do you counsel them to do? You see, uh, first of all, I don't know if every masjid can afford to have like people who can, who can be like murabbi. In Islam, we have like a category of the people like, uh, who are in the mosque or Islamic centers. A teacher, imam, murabbi. Murabbi is someone who has who has like a comprehensive type of Islamic knowledge, not only he knows how to teach, but not only he can lead the Salah and he, know, he knows rules of the Salah, but he has practical uh, approach uh, to resolve people's problem. So that's even, that person is called like Murabi. So my point is like we need, first of all, many Murabi. And Murabi is the one that uh, the kid in front of him not only he teaches the Quran and the kid lives, but he's connected to the kid and his daily life. So what even he does when he's at home. So for example, we have like a program that what do you do when you're at home? So three types of the program to help your mom and your dad. So for example, one of the parts of the tarbiyah is once you come from the school, you kiss your mom and dad and you say thank you all the time. And, and you say like whatever you did like for me, I will never. I cannot like uh, pay it back. Never. Yeah. But 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 thank you. Yeah. And then you ask the first question before I do the homework. What you want me to do? How mm -hmm. can I help you? Yeah. That's what we teach our young people. And the second is do your homework. The school duties. And number three is disconnection from TV. In case that you want to watch TV, only the news because you don't have enough time to watch the TV. And and basically like for example our center we have like homework club. We want the students to come to the mosque and do their homework. The people who have difficulties, we have tutoring. Mm -hmm. And then we have coaches, like for example, East Africans, they love soccer. We have a soccer coach. Mm -hmm. Now we are trying to get like a basketball coach. So, so that's the physical part. And we have martial artists in the mosque, so students who are attending. So, so taking we, away we have, the, the, the non-allowed uh, things, the haram, and replacing yes, it with bless, halal. Yes, and then during the, the, the play, we do, we do teach them even like, for example, not to use in a bad Latin, any bad language. For yeah. example, they are playing and one hits the other one, the other one. So the one hit says like, stuck for Allah, and the other one says... Uh, the, the F uh, word or the, yeah, yes. something to, like that. Yeah, to avoid all bad things and still say like, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we advise the parents most of the time to bring them to this program because if, we, if they bring them, the, the kids will involve these pro uh, programs and they become good examples. And the other Muslim kids, and even non-Muslim kids, will help. Like for example, like we have like 30, we help like almost in a year, uh, about 50 young people, uh, non-Muslims became Muslims because of the example of our young Muslims. 
the non-Muslims non -Muslims accepted this accepted way of life this way because of they life. saw the kids exactly. transforming one of, to one of them, better? 13 year old. This is the best example that I can share with you. David, 13 year old, Caucasian. He saw like young from Masjid Dawa, and he was saying like, uh, I, I want to be like you. Yeah. He said like, what, what do you mean? Because I, I'm 13, but I'm involving drags. Mm -hmm. Uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, I do all this bad stuff, but you don't do it. Yeah. How did you get all this? And he said that I'm, I'm, I'm connected to this Islamic center. Yeah. And he explained. Do you know what happened? His father, non-Muslim, called me. Yeah, let, let's hold it there. He called you. David's father called you. Yes. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Allah, there's only one when you look at the Bible and it says the, the earth has four corners, the, the, it, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If any Christian can point out a single unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon himself says that I am God, I am ready to accept Christianity. Back here on The Dean Show, we're trying to share with you some experiences from the youth and some advice. And you're talking to us about David's yes, David, father. Yeah, David's father called me, say like, uh, I'm David's father. I'm not a Muslim. Uh, I don't know nothing about Islam. But David has a friend from your center. And, and, and David is involved in many bad things. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I wanted my son uh, become like one of the best students. He, he's, he, he's, he's about to drop this school. Yeah. And then, and is it true like if someone joins to, to your center, becomes like drag free and he talked all- People, the, the word yes. is spreading. You come yes, here, you're not yes. swearing drug free, gang yes. free, oh, everything. Gang free, everything, yeah. like uh, bad, thi bad things, uh, you'll be free. And then, you know, he said, uh, he, he, want, he wants to accept Islam. I said, Father, I, uh, uh, do you agree that your son accepts Islam because this is the key because he, if he accepts Islam he has to follow system, system, certain rules and those rules are the ones that guide him to be free from all this so like, I, I, I want him to, 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 to accept Islam yeah. can, can I send him tonight and he came night time the mosque with the young people David said as usual Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan accepting the Islam. Now tell us, let's start with that. We got to start to wrap it up. When you say accept Islam, what does that mean? Because there might be what? some people out there now yes, they're the, thinking that you know they accept Islam and what they're going to be terrorists now or they accept no. Islam they they're going to be doing okay. they so, they yeah. accept Islam to change his life. So he doesn't want to be like uh, like uh, involved all types of the drag things. He uh, and, and alcohol, young people bring, uh, drinking like a beer and all bad things. He wants, he wants to be like a, a nice boy, uh, good, great, and uh, uh, avoid from all types of the violence. You said this so, thing that he declared, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Yeah, that, that means Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. One person says, means like, I bear witness there's only one God, and that God has a book called like uh, Holy Quran, and I will follow that teachings. And that teachings, part of it is, uh, avoid all bad things, drinking, drugs, violence, and all this. Yeah. Uh, all the, uh, and then you are saying like, I will have only one example. When you say like, I bear witness, uh, Prophet Muhammad's final messenger means like, I want to have only one example to follow, and the human example is Prophet Muhammad. So he was not drug dealer, he was not violent person, he was not like uh, a man that... Uh, hits his kids and all bad examples in every aspect as a father, as a son, as a brother. I want to follow that person as an example. That's yeah. the meaning. And that's what David accept and change his life. For the better. And, yeah, for the better. And uh, his family loved him. Even his, his, uh, his, his uncle came ahead that he wants to took, take him. Yeah, tell, 30 seconds we got. Tell us uh, where this community center is. So if someone wants to drop by and visit. Uh, 478 University Avenue West. Uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and our telephone number is 651-224-6726. Yeah. And we have a website, www.mndawa, which is D-A-W-A-H, dot net. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you have some event coming, coming up, you said? Yes, we have uh, the first annual Muslim Youth Convention on May 29th at the Convention Center in Minneapolis. We're expect, expecting more than about 2,000 young people coming to that convention, penetrate from our experience. That's on the uh, website, the information will be Yes. There. Okay. 
Sounds good. Words. Thank you for being with us. May Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, reward you in abundance. Thanks, Brother Eddie, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome. And in short, you've gotten to learn again that that call to the perfect system, your kids might be out there getting involved in all sorts of drugs and killing each other over colors and following the worst of examples. But when that person comes to the realization that all the other systems, they won't perfect a human being's life. Your moral code that you are born with gets off track. You want to get back on track as the one who created you to guide you. He is one and alone worthy of worship and he sent the best examples for you to follow. Moses, Jesus, Abraham. These were messengers and prophets of God and the last and final messenger sent to mankind. This is a living example. Today we have his living example recorded in authentic Tradition, so we have the verbatim word of God, the Quran, and his explanation of it, the hadith, the sunnah. This is the example, just like Jesus was an example at that time, Abraham was an example at that time. We have the last and final messenger, and you see the outcome that comes from this worshiping the one God alone, establishing a connection with Him through the prayer, the fasting, and leaving off all vices, drugs alcohol, and dating, and you see what happens, illegitimate children, now you come together to marry in harmony, man and woman, the right way, the way that God Almighty wants them to come together in marriage. And these are the things that our brother Imam, they're doing at this Dawah Center, and this is what the Muslims are doing, and we invite you all to this beautiful way of life, the way of life of all the messengers. You can visit us here every week at the deanshow.com. We have our radio program also at the blog section. And we'll see you next time, God willing. Until then, assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. No speech is better than to do that, to call people to Allah and to do the work. No speech is better. No, nothing is better than that. Is it true that if one person on the Allah giving you the ability to guide someone with Allah's permission, the Creator's permission, that is better than everything in this world? Better than the whole world and everything that's in it, in, in another narration, it's better than the best of wealth. But if we really felt that, Eddie, would we not be give, out giving dawah? And this is something that we encourage all the MSAs, all the dawah organizations, the masjids to get this. We want to print more. We give these to the non-Muslims for free, for free, for free. We want our brothers in humanity to become our brothers in faith. And it's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me Oh Allah you see, oh Allah you know All the sins I do I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart I'm your sinful slave You're my loving Lord I'm the one who runs away